if you're new to honkai star rail you probably don't know that the position of your characters could mean the difference between beating an enemy and failing which means you probably also don't know that if you buy the wrong light cone and hurt the shop it could take over a week to fix your mistake which is why today i'm going to be going over everything you need to know if you're a beginner in honkai star rail what's going on guys cheers i've been playing honkai star rail non-stop for the past like week since it came out and i've enjoyed it so much that i actually created this youtube channel seriously this is the first video on this channel so if you find it useful drop a thumbs up on it and consider subscribing but let's jump right into the guide and I want to start with the two most important things in Honkai Star Rail and the first one is having fun this is a single player game so at the very beginning don't stress about min maxing everything to the tenth of a percent unless that's how you enjoyed the game because the main story is pretty good the characters are relatively interesting so try to focus on just enjoying the game and not just the meta and equally as important as that this is a free game do not spend money unless you really really want to you can pretty much beat the game with all the stuff that you get for free as long as you follow a lot of the tips in this guide sure you might progress through the story a little bit slower but why rush to end game anyway like I said it's a single player game what are you gonna do when you get there you don't listen to music on two times speed just to get to the end of the song right no so only spend if you want to and if you can afford it because as with any gacha game you could end up spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars pretty quickly just trying to get your favorite characters so please spend responsibly okay now first let me explain the turn system in honkai star rail because let's face it you didn't read shit in the tutorial trust me i get it i didn't read anything either now the battle actually begins before you even enter battle this is an enemy that you can see right in front of me and it shows some of their weaknesses here at the top and we're going to talk about weaknesses in just a moment but there's a few ways that you can initiate a battle you can either attack them with an element that they're weak to which will inflict some damage to their toughness at the beginning of the battle or you can attack them with an attack that they're not weak to which just initiates the battle and you go first or if they hit you first you actually get ambushed and you go second all that to say you should probably initiate every single battle with something that they're weak to because why not so here you can see I'm going to attack him from a distance with my Bronya there's a weakness and boom you could see that the toughness bar on the two enemies that are weak to wind are starting at half that's a nice advantage okay so I hope you figured this out already but Honkai Star Rail is a turn-based RPG but unlike turn-based games like Pokemon who has the fastest Pokemon attack first and then the other Pokemon attack second in Honkai Star Rail there is an action order based on the character's speed and if a character is fast enough they can actually attack twice within the same turn now the action order is shown on the left here and the first super helpful tip that I can give you is come into the settings in the top right corner click this little button off on the right and it says whether to display the character's action value turn this on I don't know why this is off by default but now you can see the actual value next to each of the attackers in the turn order and you'll know exactly how close they are to getting their attack off this is a percentage based system and as the number gets lower the sooner the character can attack so as you can see here my Zila is the fastest of everybody on the battlefield so she goes first followed by Bronya then Natasha then some of the enemies now you can also manipulate this order in a couple of different ways for example Bronya has a skill where she can actually just pick who goes next very powerful there's also ways to slow down the enemy either with debuffs or by also breaking their toughness and as you can see here this enemy is if I attack them with Bronya it will deplete their toughness all the way down to zero now if you look on the left this is the action order if I attack this creature right here you'll see it's highlighted it will probably die because its HP is so low but if I switch my target to this enemy you'll see what happens in the action order I'll break the toughness and it'll actually move that action order down and it will attack later and that's because I will have applied what's called a weakness break so let's go ahead and do that and I'll explain what that means now a weakness break is when you reduce an enemy's toughness to zero so as you can see here each enemy has two bars there's the red bar which is obviously their HP their health their remaining health points you probably already know this but you win a battle by reducing the enemy's health to zero okay but 
the toughness is a little bit different the toughness bar is the white bar on the top and that is only reduced if you hit the enemy with an element that they are weak to so in the previous example my bronia attacked this gentleman who is now hurtled over and probably he looks like he's bleeding out or he's vomiting I don't know but when you reduce an enemy's toughness to zero and you get a weakness break a few things happen the first thing is as you saw before the enemy's turn order goes down they also take a pretty nice chunk of damage they also will then take more damage from subsequent attacks until their toughness is replenished and they are inflicted with a weakness break effect so as you can see at the top here there is a red downward arrow and if you want to see different ailments of the enemies or of your characters you can press the z key on a keyboard if you're playing on mobile you could just tap on it on the top there and you can see here the details it's called wind shear this says takes wind damage at the beginning of each turn for a certain number of turns this says two turns remaining so essentially when you get a weakness break with wind you're going to apply a damage over time if you do a weakness break with uh let's say natasha uh, i'll show you here it's going to well actually they're just dead just kidding but she does a physical damage over time usually it's an elemental damage over time or dot for short and that's pretty much everything you need to know about toughness and health now you can also attack an enemy even if they still have their toughness bar you're still going to do damage to them it's not a big deal and sometimes it's actually best if you do damage in that way and as you saw there the damage over time killed the other enemy now I also want to explain skill points as you can see right down here I have five skill points okay each character has a basic attack and a skill now you can choose between the two of these uh but you only have a certain number of skill points for your entire team so if I use this skill for my Brona, you could see that it will reduce one of my skill points and we're going to go ahead and do that. Boom. You see it reduces it to four. And then with my Zilla, I can also use a skill if I want to, or I can use a basic attack. And if I use a basic attack, it's going to replenish that skill point that I used. So this is important when it comes to team building. And we'll talk about team building later, but some characters rely heavily on their skills. Some characters don't mind using a basic attack as long as they get to pop their ultimate every once in a while. Speaking of ultimates. Okay. You're going to see this little colorful ball next to each of the characters down on the bottom here. This is their energy level. Okay. The energy level starts at about 50 percent for every single battle and you can gain energy in a couple of different ways if you use your skill you're going to gain 30 energy if you use your basic attack you're going to gain 20 energy if you defeat an enemy with that either attack or skill you're going to gain another 10 energy and if you are attacked you're going to gain eight energy once your energy bar is full you're going to be able to use your ultimate ability now each character has a different ultimate ability so you can see here on my Zilla, she turns into an absolute giga chad and she deals a ton of damage to a single target if we look at my natasha she has an aoe heal for all allies now each of these ultimate abilities has a different cost so natasha's costs 90 energy whereas zila's costs i believe 120 yes exactly so some characters are going to be able to use their ultimates more frequently than others but the way that you get the energy is the same obviously if i use my ultimate skill for natasha she's going to do the aoe heal there's a cool animation she's beautiful we love it and now her energy bar is back down now that's pretty much it for battles that's pretty much all you need to know okay that is the basics and obviously you're going to realize real quick that it gets a lot tougher okay so it sounds simple but you're going to go up against enemies that end up getting you know they're going to be five ten levels higher than you and they're going to have a bunch of different resistances and a bunch of different like extra turns follow-up attacks they're going to spawn in other enemies it, it gets crazy okay so it's important to have a well balanced team now I hear you saying already Omniarch why don't you just tell me what the best characters or what the best team in the game is and I hate to break it to you but there uh there pretty much is no best team I mean there's really no best characters except for maybe Zila and March 7th because oh my god just look at them they are so incredible just they're just incredible the the designs of these characters are great anyway like I said before you can complete the game with the characters that you get for free so there's the main character there's Natasha that you're going to get eventually you also have like I said before March 7th and you have Don Hung but the free characters that shit is boring bro and this is a gotcha game so I already know you're ready to gamble but remember you can't control what you actually get unless you're a, a giga well and you're ready to drop five figures okay so instead of talking about the best characters in the game you should understand that the best characters are the ones that you actually have and it's important to know how to effectively build a team with the components that you might find yourself in possession of so we're going to talk about team building in just a second but while we're on the topic of 
pulls or gambling there's a couple of different banners in the game okay this is your regular banner or your regular warp this is going to be here all the time okay there's also a character event warp this is a limited time thing you could see that Zila's is only going to be here for another six days there's also a light cone banner this is a weapon banner and then there's probably for you if you just started there's probably a fourth banner that is the beginner banner and you're going to see in the bottom right corner my big fat head is covering it uh but for the beginner banner you're going to see that it costs only eight tickets for 10 warps and I would recommend you know that that beginner banner you can only pull on it 50 times but you are guaranteed a five star and because it's actually a cheaper banner I would recommend using all of your beginner tickets on that banner because the standard banner only guarantees you a five star every 90 pulls and there's no discount here okay but the other thing that I should mention is that on the beginner banner, there's no pity system. Okay. So if you get a five star on that beginner banner after like, let's say 10 pulls, the other 40, you're not guaranteed a five star. And you're also not working towards a pity system. If you don't know what pity is, you can come down here and click view details, but essentially it's the game's way of guaranteeing that you actually get something good after 90 pulls, but it resets if you get a five star okay so if you get a five star after 10 pulls your pity reduces to zero and then you're 90 pulls away from another guarantee so what i'm saying is on the beginner banner if you get a five star within like 10 pulls or 20 pulls or whatever just just forget about the beginner banner and just go to the regular banner because you're going to start to work on that pity you're going to be working towards a guaranteed second five star whereas the beginner banner you're not guaranteed to okay so back to team building a well-balanced team has a couple of components and a few of them are a bit flexible okay so don't think that you must follow this exact rule otherwise you're going to lose the game but these are just like general guidelines to get you started on the right track each character plays a different role here in honkai star rail and what i would recommend and what i'm using right here is a 10 tank a healer a buffer and over behind my fat head is Zila who is my main DPS or damage per second she's gonna be the one that deals the most damage out of all them and the others are there for support now having a tank and a healer might be a little bit overkill you might want to replace either the tank or the healer with either a sub DPS you know a second character that can deal damage or you might want to replace it with another buffer or a debuffer you know somebody that's going to apply debuffs to the enemy but I would say every team should have at least one tank or one healer and the good news is that the tank I'm using and the healer I'm using here both the main character and Natasha they're free so you're gonna get them just by playing the game now here's another team that I have built okay you could see that my Bronya is my support and my Zila is the same I know my head is in the way here but you can you can you believe me that she's there right okay now you can see I replaced my healer with Welt who is a debuffer and he also deals a little bit of damage and then I also replaced the main character with a different tank Japard who has an AoE shield instead of a taunt he's just a different type of tank they both fill that Role. but you could also build something like this where I replace Zila with my Don Hung who is also a main DPS single target damage and Serval who is basically an AoE sort of a sub DPS she also deals damage over time but you want to have some combination of tank healer and then buff debuff and then either main DPS and sub DPS or something along those lines because if you go all damage you're not going to survive the fights and if you go all tank you're not going to deal enough damage to beat the enemy okay so now you might be thinking that's great but how do I know like what role does each character play do I have to go through here and like read all their stats and read all their talents and all their abilities no the game actually tells you exactly what they do they just don't use plain English okay so as you can see here this is the main character and underneath them it says preservation if you click on that these are the different paths in the game and you can think of paths as just roles that the characters play okay so preservation is your tank if a character has preservation like the main character that I have if yours doesn't say preservation that means you haven't unlocked the fire element for your main character so if that's confusing just know that eventually it will be preservation but if I go to Japard you can see he's preservation or also March 7th she's also preservation she is a tank character there's also destruction which is kind of just like a, a generic good damage single target and AoE and sort of can survive pretty well the hunt is big single target damage erudition is AoE damage harmony is a buffer nihility is a debuffer and abundance is a healer it's actually pretty straightforward if you just read through it I wish they would just say it though like why say preservation just call it a tank why call it the hunt just call it single target damage it's easier to understand I don't know 
now i assume because you're watching a guide video that you don't just want to play for fun you want to know like who's kind of good to invest in well of course there are tier lists all around the internet and of course also here on youtube and if you want me to make a tier list video let me know in the comment section below while you're down there like and subscribe like i said earlier it really helps up the channel a ton it'll get this video into the youtube algorithm so other honkai star rail players might see it but the reason that you might be thinking what are the best characters to invest in is because you're worried about wasting your experience and your upgrade materials and that is understandable okay but just know that in the beginning of the game leveling up the characters to level 20 or 30 is very cheap and the ascension materials are very cheap as you see here i've upgraded every single character at least to level 20 and it only costs about a, a six of the purple exp materials it's so cheap and when you do that you actually get a free summon uh if i come over here you could see i got a free star rail pass these are the summons here in the game so that's why i did that uh, there's a little pro tip for you if you unlock a character bring them to 20 ascend them and you get a free summon so i just want to relieve some of your anxiety okay you can pretty much freely upgrade everybody you want to level 30 or maybe even 40 and it's not really that expensive it's not going to ruin your account if you do that and as you play the game more you're going to learn which characters are the most valuable to you and of course prioritize those if you notice that a lot of the content you're encountering is taking extra damage from ice characters then maybe invest more in March 7th or another ice character that you might have here there's plenty of them okay if you need a fire character then invest in a fire character that you might have like Asta or the main character when you unlock that ability now one thing you might realize as you're playing through the game if you're a free to play player is that as you get farther and farther into the story of Yorilo 6 this is the first planet that you actually visit you're gonna notice your main character starts to feel really weak and uh that's because they are but don't worry eventually like I said earlier you can change them to the fire element I won't spoil any of the story but the fire element main character is actually pretty good I would say that the physical damage main character that you start the game with is pretty bad honestly like D tier character but the fire element is a really solid tank with a good taunt and I would say they're probably like a tier they're pretty good so don't think that they're totally useless and there's still some content where I actually prefer the main character tank over my five star Japard so that just goes to show how useful they are in some scenarios especially because the fire element is a pretty good type coverage element okay I hear you already you're saying Omniarch you're copping out just tell us what the good characters are so we can just start to focus on them okay okay in the early game first of all you want to focus leveling up your main dps first whether that's don hung or somebody else if you get lucky in the early game and zila is still on the banner then i would say use zila i've been using her she's been carrying me through everything she's great if you get lucky on the on the beginner banner on the 50 pull banner that's at a discount remember or if you get really lucky in your regular banner pulls and you happen to get your hands on clara then she can be your main dps she has a really interesting play style of counter attacking also as you can see over here there's an additional reward section okay make sure you click this because this is going to let you actually pick a five star that you get guaranteed after 300 pulls so it's going to take a long time to get there but eventually you're going to get there and you know you might want to pick one of these characters that either you like the most or if there's a component of your team that you're really missing like you really need a dps or you really need a support then pick that okay it depends on your account what you need bronia is another five star that i'm using she's probably the best support in the game at the time of recording this if you don't have her you can use a four star character who goes by the name of ting yun i don't think i have her so i can't show you but if you do get her you can focus on her she's very good if you need a healer there's only two healers in the game so either you're going to use natasha like i showed you before she's the free healer that you get as you play the game or you can get bailu who is the five star healer at the time of recording this bailu is the best healer in the game so if you need a healer desperately you could pick bailu so that's just a couple of examples of characters that you might want to focus on because they are quite good now while we're here let's talk about the special banners really quickly because i've mentioned zila a couple of times in this video and depending on when you're watching this she may be gone already jing yuan might be on the banner by the time you're watching this that is supposedly the next banner that we're going to get that is a limited time but understanding banners is really important in a gacha game especially if you've never played one before because this is going to be the main way and almost the only way that you're going to get uh new characters in the game so you have to be very careful with how you're spending your currency in this game 
game there's a few different currencies uh the main one is called stellar jade okay you're gonna get a lot of stellar jade for free at the beginning of the game and through events but that's gonna dry up really quick you're gonna get probably 40 to 50 thousand stellar jade for free at the beginning of the game and then after that you're gonna hit a brick wall and you're gonna get like barely any okay so saving that stellar jade at the beginning of the game is very important if you like who's on the limited banner and they fill a role that you need on your team then i would say make sure you have enough stellar jade when that banner comes around that you can pull all the way up to pity if you click on view details it will explain pity to you but essentially how this works in honkai star rail is every 90 pulls that you do you are guaranteed a five star character and it's a 50 percent chance that it will be the character on the banner if you do not get that character on your first 90 pull pity then the next five star that you do get is guaranteed to be that character so if you're super unlucky then the maximum amount of tickets you will need to get a character is 180 so that would suck hopefully you get it before you hit that point but honestly it'll still probably be at least like 150. also limited time banners have an increased drop rate of certain five star characters so right now for zealous banner there's an increased rate of getting natasha hook or Pela. I've actually maxed out my Natasha because of this banner and I only got one copy of Zila, which is heartbreaking. Now, how do you know if the character on the banner that is a limited time banner is worth getting or not, right? Because eventually they're going to go away and they might not come back for months or up to a year. Okay. Remember this game is made by the same people who make Genshin impact and they've been known to go upwards of a year without a character coming back. So if you really want them, then you should be saving for them. But what I recommend is if you're a free to play player or a low spender and a character, a new banner comes out, then I would say, do not pull for that banner for a couple of days. Okay. Let the whales get the character, let the whales test the character and then watch guides on YouTube. If it turns out that the character is OP and broken, then maybe go ahead and pull for them. Or if you just like the character, you can do that as well. But one tip that I will remind you for these banners is that if the character's primary purpose is damage per second or DPS, they are the most likely to be power crept out of the game. What that means is in the future, there's a good chance that they're going to release another character that just deals bigger damage numbers. Okay. Because bigger damage number equals better character equals th they're going to sell more tickets. They're going to make more money. So they're going to keep doing it. Okay. They're going to keep releasing more powerful characters. Okay. Now that you know how to build a team and you've summoned some of your favorite characters, like the gambling addict that you are, let's Let's talk about how to boost their stats okay you can see their stats off to the right here every character has the same six stats here okay we could jump through all them and they have the same six stat categories and they also have five different skills there's a basic attack an actual skill ultimate ability talent and technique there's also a bunch of sub stats and like different resistances and interactions that are a little bit more advanced we won't talk about that now but there's a couple of guaranteed ways to increase these stat numbers okay the first one is going to be leveling up a character if you level up a character you can see if i level up my yan ching from 20 to 21 his hp is going to go from 285 to 291. so hp attack and defense they are always increased by leveling up the character those are the only three stats that leveling up is going to influence the same thing is true for ascending okay so the first 20 levels can be gotten for free then to go from 20 to 30 you actually have to ascend a character and then from 30 to 40 40 to 50 as you might expect every 10 levels is a new ascension now my don hung right here if i ascend him He's going to get a nice chunk of stats as well so again it's hp attack and defense ascending is done by using a combination of a more common and a more rare material leveling up just uses experience books experience books are a little bit easier to get if you come up to the top of your screen here and you click this little card with an orbit around there uh, you're going to see a bunch of different things in the survival index depending on how far into the game you are but the Talix golden is going to give you an option of getting the experience travelers guides. Okay. This is how you level up the characters. Then if you go into stagnant shadow, this is how you're going to get some of the important things that you need to ascend a character. You can actually see it's written here. So if you guys didn't notice that, th there you go. If you don't see all this stuff, don't worry. You're going to unlock it as you play through the game. So that's fine. I'll explain Calyx's a little bit later. So just stay tuned for that. But there's other ways to gain stats for your characters. Now there's also the light cone. Okay. The light cone. I want you to think of this as the weapon that your character wields. That's pretty much what this is. If you've played Genshin impact, that's the, the, the role that the light cone plays. And as you can see off to the right, the light cone gives you the same three stats we've been talking about. Okay. So leveling up ascending 
and equipping a light cone and also either enhancing or leveling up that light cone is going to give you more stats okay so you can see here that there's a bunch of different light cones they all give you different stats as well as a passive ability as you can see down here for dance 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 this is the passive ability so i go to my zilla there's cruising in the stellar sea this is the passive ability now the thing about light cones is if you level up a light cone and then you want to remove it and put it on a different character for example moving this light cone from my zilla to my don hung i can do that i click switch and then boom all the progress that i made on that light cone for my zilla is now on my don hung so that's pretty cool the downside is that light cones actually also follow the path of the character okay so this light cone called subscribe for more which isn't a bad idea by the way button down below this can only be used on characters that follow the hunt remember this is the role of single target damage per second this is the same thing that we showed for Zila. so a light cone that you level up for Zila, for example cannot be put on my natasha not that i would ever do that but it literally won't work now as you guessed leveling up and enhancing your light cones is accomplished in the same way that it's done for characters this second golden calyx option will give you the items that you need to level up your light cones and then in the crimson calyxes you can get some of the materials that you're going to need to enhance those light cones now beneath light cones we have traces okay and this looks like a talent point system that's pretty much because it is and traces are going to level up your actual skills so remember before the detail screen off to the right there's five different skills basic attack skill ultimate the traces is how you're going to improve each of those specific skills so here we can see for my bronia this trace improves the damage that my basic attack does so from 80 to 90 this is for my talent this is for my ultimate ability so on and so forth but there's also ways that you can unlock new passive abilities right so this bonus ability here increases my crit rate of my basic attack to 100 percent that's huge I also have a bonus ability here that says at the start of the battle all ally defense increased by 20 percent for two turns and this varies depending on the actual character so if you find that some of the abilities on your characters aren't doing very well then you can level up the individual skills in the traces and of course this will require some materials that you guessed it you can get from calyxes specifically the crimson calyxes we also have relics here and relics is just an equipment system okay if you've played other rpgs you can equip a helmet you can equip boots you can equip a chest piece you can equip your gloves or your hand piece okay and then there's also a sphere and a rope but relics are different than everything else we've talked about before because different relics have randomized stats the only exception is your headpiece and your gloves will always have a main stat that is gloves will always have attack you can see I go through every single gloves here they all have attack as their main stat that's the orange stat here and on the helmet you'll see that it's always HP the orange main stat always HP no matter what but the rest of the stats beneath that you can see they're all different so it is literally randomized every time that a new relic drops the stats on it will be random so what i recommend is when you're progressing your account i would say focus on leveling up and ascending your characters then leveling up and ascending the light cones then leveling up and upgrading the traces because all those things you can control you know exactly how many stats you're going to get you know exactly what sort of improvement you're going to make with relics you could be spending trailblaze power which we'll talk about later when we discuss calyxes and you could be getting items that have random stats that are complete garbage to you and you're not going to make progress on your account because you're you're just sitting there getting trash and you're not progressing so keep that in mind i would say relics focus on these last okay the good news is that just like everything else you can enhance or upgrade these and you could pretty much upgrade everything to let's say plus six and it's not going to cost that much it's going to be relatively easy to get there the reason we stop at six is because one it's cheap and two every three levels you're going to gain an additional stat on uh, on this bar here okay like so as you see here there's only four stats here but on my sixth one there's an additional like the the number of stats increases i would say you probably don't have to seriously worry about relics until trailblaze level 35 or so maybe 32 something around there so seriously don't let that all confuse you finally we have eidolons over here at the bottom eidolons are the one that you can control the least so this one you really do not have to stress about this because there's no way that you can improve this unless you spend thousands and thousands of dollars or get super lucky but an eidolon is obtained or upgraded 
by obtaining a specific item for that character and the only way to get the specific item for that character is to summon them from the banners in a duplicate fashion so for example when you first get zila okay you unlock her the second time that you summon zila you're gonna get a eidolon for zila and that's gonna increase her eidolon to plus one and then you have to summon her a second time to get eidolon two and you can go all the way up to six now of course for a four star character it's gonna be a lot easier and like i said before my natasha actually maxed her out already so for four stars it'll be much easier especially if there's a banner where there's an increased probability that you're going to get that character but you really have no control over this okay so of course upgrading the eidolons will typically give you new passives they're also going to give you increased levels to your traces and to your skills so there's a lot of really cool stuff here uh but again you can't control this so don't worry about it too much most of the characters i have do not have eidolon upgrades and they're great now before we move on a few quick tips okay since you're a beginner for stats for your main damage dealer at the beginning of the game just level up your best gloves to plus 12. just do it it's going to give you a massive amount of attack in the very beginning of the game and for your main damage dealer typically all their damage is going to scale off of your attack so if i look at my zila for example her basic attack says deals quantum damage equal to 80 percent of her attack and remember what i said before the glove relic guarantees the main status attack so no matter what your best gloves are just bring them to 12 at the beginning of the game and you're gonna have a ton of attack moving forward the same thing is true if you're using a healer like natasha or like bailu the helmets remember is based on hp there's always the main status hp and if you look at the skills for either natasha or bailu their heals are all based off of their max hp so you want to have the most amount of hp on your healers as possible you can see here i stacked a bunch of hp on my natasha i'm sure if you're a pro and you're watching this first of all why second of all maybe your natasha is better i get it okay relics are randomized but getting the helmet to plus 12 is a guaranteed way of getting more hp for those heals another little tip for stats is for your main dps there is crit rate and crit damage crit rate is the probability when you attack a character or, or an enemy that you land a critical hit and a critical hit will deal increased damage based on how much your crit rate is so the total damage that you would normally do is multiplied by this percentage here so 1.6 and a 60 percent increase that's nice um the the best way to try and iron this out is having a two to one crit rate to crit damage ratio so if i ideally right now i should have a little bit less in crit damage and a little bit more in crit rate but the only way to get these really is through your relics and remember that's random so just keep that in mind but you want to shoot for a two to one ratio if your crit rate is 50 percent then you want your crit damage to be around a hundred percent if your crit rate is really low but your crit damage is really high then sure you're going to deal a ton of crit damage but you're going to hit it very infrequently like look at my welt here this is like this makes no sense right he almost never crits but when he does it's nice compared to my serval who has uh, the same literally the same crit damage but she's going to crit three times more often than my welt okay so that's just a much better build on your main dps having that two to one ratio is going to scale your overall damage really nice and the final tip i want to give you about stats for your characters is what i mentioned at the very beginning of the video and that has to do with herta's store okay herta is the character you're, you're, if you're watching this video you probably know who herta is you meet her very early on in the game she is responsible for developing the simulated universe on the spaceship we'll talk about simulated universe in a little bit but as you progress through this game mode you're going to gain currency here Herta's bond and you can exchange this for one of three five star light cones these are the weapons that you equip to your characters and five star light cones at the beginning of the game are very rare and very hard to come by unless you get lucky on your summons of these three the best one to get is the cruising in the stellar sea this is the light cone for the hunt okay this is the one that I have on my Zila right now and this of the three is just the best this one is if uh, it's it's not great okay it's, it's honestly just not great the light cone for preservation is okay eventually you can come back and get this if you have nothing better for your for your tanks but what i would recommend is getting the one for the hunt this is probably one of your main dps's remember don hung is the hunt okay so if nothing else you can use this for him and you can continue to upgrade that light cone with the super imposers that you get here also 
in the shop and this is going to superimpose or just upgrade that light cone now superimposing for light cones is effectively a similar thing to eidolons for your characters you need a duplicate copy of that light cone to superimpose it and it will increase those base stats uh, but in her shop you get a universal superimpose for two currency so i would say use that for the hunt light cone that you get here for free now let's talk more about calyxes and the power system the trailblaze power system okay trailblaze power you're going to unlock this system very early in the game and you're only going to have access to the golden calyxes and trailblaze power is an energy system that refreshes over time i think it's every like six minutes or something like that you're going to get an additional trailblaze power it might be longer than that i don't pay attention but you can see here that i will fully recover my power in 16 hours okay and once you hit that cap of 180 you're going to stop replenishing because you're fully capped out so what's important to know about this system is that you should be spending down this trailblaze power before it gets capped right because you don't want to cap it then you're just wasting trailblaze power that you could be regenerating and you need to spend this trailblaze power down to get important upgrade materials you literally cannot advance your characters without some of the materials that you get by completing this content now at the beginning of the game if you're wondering is you know a character experience more important or is light cone experience more important or is credits more important i would say credits you're now you're not going to run out of this until you're at least trailblaze level 40 or higher so literally do not think about credits for a long time don't worry i've literally never done this okay i've literally never done this at the beginning of the game if you don't have the crimson or stagnant shadow cavern or corrosion whatever i would say do character experience and light cone experience in a two to one ratio so you're going to need more character experience at the beginning of the game than light cone experience because remember you can just transfer a light cone to a new character if you uh, if you unlock a new character you get lucky from a summon you could just take the light cone you've upgraded for that path and put it on that new character whereas if you get a new character you have to upgrade them from the beginning so you're going to need more experience for characters in the beginning of the game so focus on that more now once you get a bit farther into the game you're not going to do these as much and the most important place to spend your trailblaze power every single week is called echo of war now you're going to unlock this later in the game but these are essentially reliving some of the boss battles that you've done throughout the story and there's only three of these that you can do per week and it resets every week but these are super important to upgrading some of your characters you're going to know which ones you need by going through the different traces for those characters so just pay attention to the ones that you need the most but this you have to do every week all three of these like this is super important it's very very crucial for progressing your account then if your bottleneck is ascending the characters do the stagnant shadow if the bottleneck is leveling up the traces do the crimson calyxes and focus on the materials that you need for your main dps first then move on to other characters if you find you're dying a lot then focus on your tanker healer if you feel like your main dps still isn't doing enough then maybe focus on your buffer so just pay attention to the materials that you need go all in on one character until you level them up as much as you can their ascensions their traces everything and then move on to another character if you spread out your resources across all four characters you're going to only progress all of them slowly and you're going to notice the progression of your main dps the most so focus on that one first only after you've done that for all of your characters should you then focus on your relics because remember you cannot control what you get from these relics like yes you're gonna get a relic but the stats on it could be complete trash so why would you waste that precious power on something you can't control when you could be spending it on something you can control okay so far we've talked about how to build a team how to level up the team and how to get more stats for everything and this is going to help you progress through the story but you should also be progressing through the simulated universe which i've talked about a little bit before and you'll have to do this as you progress through the story anyway but the simulated universe also resets every single week you can see here in the same place where the calyxes are you could see the simulated universe progress here you could see i've completed it for this week and it resets in three and a half days but by completing the simulated universe at the highest difficulty that you can muster you're gonna get a lot of free stuff here so you're gonna get a bunch of stellar jade which is super important you're also gonna gain some credits some free summons which is great and some tracks of destiny you're gonna need this to progress and level up some late game traces this is very these are very hard to come by so you need this you have to be doing this but also as you progress through the game you upgrade your trailblaze level that is the level of your account by the way you're gonna unlock new worlds here in the simulated universe and the first time you clear this you're also gonna gain more experience to level up your account and unlock new content 
this is how you're going to gain those currencies you need to get the five star light cone that I talked about before you're also going to get free stellar Jade and free summons by doing this but every time you go through this you're also going to gain extra drops for items that you need to progress your characters and starting at I believe world three and beyond you're going to be able to get some relics from this as well it's super important to progress through this as far as you can every single week every once in a while you're also going to want to check in on the forgotten hall because this is another progress system where as you go through and you get two or three stars or even just beating these different levels in the forgotten hall you're gonna get free stuff okay so 36 total stars across all of the different levels and you're gonna get 200 stellar jade and 20,000 credits and you can see here that is literally the case for all this stuff so at the beginning of the game uh you're gonna get a lot of this really easily okay the first three star 200 stellar jade the second three star 200 stellar jade okay so you're gonna get a lot of free summons at the beginning of the game by doing this and also just by completing the stage you're gonna gain some level up and experience items so come through here every couple of days and see if you can three star things that you couldn't a few days before now eventually you're probably gonna reach a wall with your equilibrium level here you can see I literally cannot progress my Natasha even if I had enough of these materials I couldn't do it until I'm equilibrium level four right now I'm only equilibrium level three which you can find out here in the settings it'll be right underneath your name equilibrium level three you unlock this after reaching trailblaze level 40 and completing the quest equilibrium level two is unlocked at level 30 and completing the quest and so on and so forth sometimes it might feel like your trailblaze level is just going up really slow you gain this experience by the way by completing quests also doing things like calyxes like this simulated universe all that type of stuff it's going to get you trailblaze experience but here's a little tip for you guys the fastest way to get trailblaze experience is by doing your daily quests so again if you click the little card with the star on it and you come up here to the top the daily training these are your daily quests and for every 100 points that you go through this you're gonna gain 290 trailblaze exp and this is typically more than like your side quests right the blue quests you're, you're gonna gain i mean you can get all 500 of this in like five minutes okay and each one of these milestones for me is about 300 that's 1500 trailblaze experience in five minutes sometimes you have to do like 30 minutes or 40 minutes of questing just to get that much and here you can do it really quick so you want to make sure that you're doing your daily training every single day because that's how you're just going to progress your account as fast as possible okay now let me just rapid fire a couple of really important quick tips for you guys here near the end of the video first of all if you open up your map you can see in the top left corner there's a chest icon and then it says for me eight of eight this will literally tell you how many chests or rewards are on each level of the map so for base zone there's eight for storage zone there's 10 for supply zone there's seven this is how many rewards are there and how many you've gotten so on the base zone i've gotten every reward possible this includes eight treasure chests these are basic chests they contain typically i think five stellar jade and a couple of other important things as well as trailblaze experience so this is free stuff just run around the map find all the treasure chests and you're gonna get a bunch of free things there's also a warp trotter this is an enemy that spawns in randomly in the particular level okay so for base zone there's one for storage zone there's one for supply zone there's one but there's not one on every single level it's on most levels but defeating the warp trotter in battle which is very easy by the way I think you get either 40 or 60 stellar Jade so that's really good it's literally free summons so a tip for you guys go through every level of the map and this also includes your six okay go through every level of the map and get all the chests get all the warp trotters okay because you're going to get a bunch of free stellar jade which is going to get you more summons and of course i should practice what i preach i'm missing some of these things here now if you're missing a treasure chest it's possible that you cannot get it until you progress the story more because some areas of the map might be blocked off by gates or you know doors that you can't open things like that so don't stress about it too much in the early game but if you complete an area come back to it later and see if you can get everything also around the map are going to be different puzzles and these puzzles will actually show up on your map typically as a little puzzle piece as you can see here if I talk to this matrix matrix manager I'll be able to complete a puzzle a lot of these are present typically in the second world but there are some in other places as well and as you might expect completing the puzzles is going to get you free stellar jade so again 
free summons so go through and do all the puzzles in the world i hope you like puzzles because there's plenty of them and they're actually kind of cool also as you're exploring through the world you're going to come across enemies that are called formidable foes you're going to know that they're formidable foes because they're typically a lot bigger than your standard enemy they're typically a higher level and there's usually a chest behind them that is locked it's surrounded by a red band unfortunately i don't have any more on the map but if you discover a formidable foe and you don't beat it it will show up on your map as an orange icon so you can always come back later when you're more powerful and defeat it but you should always defeat the formidable foes because then it unlocks the chest behind them and you guessed it inside that chest is free stellar jade and free other items that you need to progress your account as well as like relics and things like that and a good relic remember they are randomized stats so a good relic can really make the difference if you can get a really good crit rate on a relic that's going to be huge if you're having trouble defeating these formidable foes or even just a boss fight or in the simulated universe do not forget to use the techniques that your characters have there are five technique points for me at the beginning of the game i believe it's only three but this allows you to activate the technique of your character okay so for zila she enters into this phantom state and i can run past enemies if i want to or i can deal extra damage to them when i initiate a battle but if i go into bronia i use her technique it gives me a little boost when i enter battle or my main character i use this technique and i gain a shield when i enter battle so this gives you a nice buff before you even enter the fight and that's gonna it could make the difference between winning and losing and the final tip that i'm gonna leave you guys with and this one is super important this has to do with the order of of your characters on the account okay so here you can see that i have my zila all the way off to the right my main character is all the way off on the left and this was not a mistake i did not do this randomly this was done on purpose in this game if you're fighting an enemy you can either do a basic attack or an aoe attack okay and the aoe in this game depending on the attack typically can only hit up to three targets there's the main target that you're hitting and then there's additional damage done to the targets on either side so what that means for you is the order that your characters are placed matters because guess what the enemy has aoe as well so typically you want your tank off to one side and your main dps as far away from them as possible because if they hit your tank with aoe and by the way tanks have a built-in increased probability of being attacked if you guys didn't know there's just a higher probability that enemies will attack your tank and if they do with an aoe attack it's only going to hit one side okay because there is nothing to the other side of that tank so you're literally going to be taking less total damage by having your tank off to the side and likewise by having your main dps off to the opposite side members of the hunt typically have a decreased probability of being targeted by the enemy and that's good because you want them to take as little damage as possible so the more important your party member the farther they should be from your tank all right if you made it all the way to the end of this video i hope you'll drop a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it'll get this video out into that vicious youtube algorithm so other Ankai star rail players might see it comment down below any other beginner tips that you have for new players down in the comment section while you're down there consider subscribing and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that i upload a honkai star rail video with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace